and that is North Korea, offering an Olympics olive branch to South Korea. The rival countries reopening a border hotline earlier today to discuss the Pyongyang, uh, the, uh, Pyongyang Winter Games, uh, Pyongyang Winter Games, rather, the diplomatic breakthrough coming hours after President Trump issued a warning to North Korea. He said this on Twitter. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I, too, have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works. Meanwhile, U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley said yesterday America will continue its hard line against North Korea, following reports that Pyongyang might be preparing to fire another missile soon. We need to have them stop nuclear weapons, and they need to stop it now. So North Korea can talk with anyone they want, but the U.S. is not going to recognize it or acknowledge it until they agree to ban the nuclear weapons that they have. Joining me right now, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., now senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and Fox News contributor, Ambassador John Bolton. Ambassador, good to see you, sir. Good morning. Happy thank, New Year. Thanks so much for joining us. What do you make of all this? Well, I think uh, what the North Koreans are doing is pure propaganda. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure it has anything to do with U.S. pressure. I think it has more to do with the fact that uh, they are very close uh, to achieving their long-sought objective of being able to deliver nuclear weapons to any target they want in the United States or worldwide. And I think they're playing on the gullibility of the current South Korean government, not to mention the gullibility of a lot of American political leaders, to make it look like they're uh, they're somehow trying to open a channel of communication. It's, uh, uh, as I say, this is, this is classic uh, North Korean following the script of how to buy time. In this case, not much time that they need, I think, to get this uh, capability. But, I mean, in, in terms of answering Kim Jong-un with this mine is bigger than yours conversation, uh, what do you think about that? I mean, is that the right tack? What, what should we be doing, given that Kim Jong-un continues these threats taunting America? Yeah, I think the taunting the really, yeah, the taunting is uh, fundamentally irrelevant. I think what we should do is move more forces to Guam, to Japan, into the uh, Yellow Sea and the East Sea. Uh, because I don't think the military threat, the potential use of military force is going to be taken seriously uh, until that buildup takes place. And it may sound paradoxical, but I think the one chance we have of convincing China uh, that they better crack down themselves on North Korea, my view is we should reunify the peninsula, but to get China's attention uh, is, is to make the military threat Incredible, and that hasn't happened yet. Right. So what, what does this president need to do? I mean, I feel like a lot of the moves that President Trump has made has been as much to the subject as it is a message to China. For example, the, you know, the, the strikes to Syria, telling the president of China while they're having dinner in Mar-a-Lago, the, the, the tough stance and the tough talk against, uh, against North Korea, the fact that ISIS ha ha is being defeated. All of these are messages to China we're serious, do not mess around, get on board or be with the terrorists. What's your take on that? What else does he need to do? Well, I think that is the president's message. I mean, it took a while to convince a lot of uh, foreign leaders that Barack Obama was no longer president. And I think that's been accomplished. But whether the Chinese believe more is coming, I think is very much open to question. They, they've still followed their script, which is uh, appease the Americans for a little while, cut off a little bit of oil, uh, raise your raise the temperature a little bit, and then when you think the Americans have uh, their attention has wandered away, go back to business as usual. So uh, under current circumstances, if the projections made by CIA Director Mike Pompeo and others about how close the North has gotten in the past 12 to 18 months are accurate, there's not a lot of time to waste here. Talking to the North Koreans is a waste of time. Uh, talking to the Chinese is increasingly. I think, unlikely to produce the kind of result we need. So you're, you're getting down fairly quickly to a binary choice. Live with uh, North Korea with nuclear weapons, which Susan Rice, Barack Obama's national security advisor, is prepared to do, or look at military force. These are not attractive options, but that's, that's where we're headed. To. Yeah, I want, I want to close this out before I move on to domestic issues and ask you this. Should we be looking at this new sort of olive branch where North Korea is open to discussing the Olympic Games with South Korea. How significant do you see that? 
I think it, it means nothing. nothing. Uh, look, the, w we should be happy that North Korea is willing to talk. We've talked uh, directly and indirectly to North Korea for 25 years, during which period of time they have lied virtually every day. They've made commitments. They've reneged on them. What they have done is a classic nuclear proliferators game plan. They have used time in negotiations to perfect the complex science and technology they need to, to create deliverable nuclear weapons. And now they just need a little bit more time, and now they want to talk? Give me a break. Yeah.